Oh, I love this machine so much. You may notice I'm somewhere a little bit different today. That's because I am suffering from organ displacement. Yeah, basically the organ project has taken over everything. Because all the pipes are stacked up here, there and everywhere, everything's kind of been displaced and I've sort of run out of space. So you may notice that I'm next to a plant, my emergency stash of petrol, and also Michael Caine's, what's it all about? The autobiography. I'm still waiting for the circuit board for part three of the organ project. So I figured let's embark on another journey and make something a little bit fun. I've been wanting to make a visitor counter for the museum for a little while now, but I figured I should make it a little bit interesting. I mean, it would be easy to make a visitor counter after something like an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi or a Teensy or something, but you know, that would just be a little bit, a little bit too easy. And what happens if there's an electromagnetic storm? Heaven forbid we might lose the visitor count or something like that. And then I remembered I've got loads of these green bags. In these green bags are going to be the answer to making a counter that's electromagnetically stormproof. I mean, technically an electromagnetic storm isn't really the biggest issue with this thing, but I'm just trying to justify building this machine that's in my head. So just, just give us a moment. Anyway, let's have a look in the inside of these with this ill-suited knife that is pretty damn blunt. I mean, it would have been better just not using a knife in the first place. Ooh, so, pass the parcel, come on. Uh. <laughs> there we go. Oh, ah, come on. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, ho, ho, oh yeah. Oh, so these are new old stock uni selectors from the 1960s. Uni selectors were quite a common component back in the day. You don't really hear much of them anymore. But you may recognize these specific ones from the YouTuber's Secret Santa last year where I made this old Tony a light chaser out of two of these and a bunch of LEDs. What that light chaser did is it basically made use of the interrupt switch on the back of the uni selector. What the interrupter does is it initiates the uni selector and then it turns itself off again. This means it goes and it actually spins around in a circle. Look at that. Oh, you can see it slowly circling around. And and you can see in the light chaser how we use that to automate the lights to make it look like it was going around doing a nice animation. If you aren't fully aware of what a uni selector is, I'll definitely recommend you go and watch that video first. The link is below and hopefully it'll make it a little bit more obvious about what we're about to do today. Ooh. So today we're going to make a machine out of a handful of these that is basically going to count to a million. A million is a pretty optimistic number, but you know, like may as well. First off in the light chaser video, you'll see this. I've 3D printed a few more of these. These are basically mounts for the uni selectors so we can mount them onto bits of wood, like the bit of wood right here. Each uni selector is gonna be in charge of counting up a single digit. So this counts from one to 10. This will count from 10 to 100. This will count from 100 to 1,000. This will count from 1,000 to 10,000. This will count from 10,000 to 100,000. And this will count from 100,000 to a million. Ooh. And we're also gonna chuck in another one for a little bit of a hidden feature that we'll talk about in a little bit. The first thing we need to remember is if we put electricity through it, It'll just clippity clippity clock along. Next, if we wire in the interrupter switch in series with this, it'll actually just go off automatically. Oh yeah! Next, we need to remember that each of the uni selectors has 30 contacts around. So every single rotation selects between 30 contacts. So each of these uni selectors need to count to 10. This counts from one to 10, and then on every 10th number, it counts this up, and this counts from 10 to 100. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, clicks this over, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, bloody, bloody, blood, 100, and then it passes off to the next one. So we need to divide these 30 contacts down to 10. We now have a slightly more involved circuit. If you look at this wire that's kind of going around, I've soldered it to connect two connectors on the uh, barrel and then skip one and connect two and skip one and connect two. And then the wire is connecting back into itself into this interrupter switch right here. And then the interrupter switch is connected to the solenoid. What that means it does is when the wiper is connected to one of the soldered joints that is connected through, through the interrupter and into this solenoid, it'll send some voltage through. However, when the wiper selects one that isn't connected, it's going to stop everything because there's no electricity. So let's count how many rotations it takes for this wiper to get back to that point. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10. Boom, there we go. This is exactly how the Uniselector Light Chaser works. However, it's wired in a slightly different orientation where there is only one of these pads missing. That means every single other one is connected so it automatically runs around until it gets back to the start again. And like in the light chaser, if you keep on adding more uni selectors, you can make a more complicated circuit. So let's start bolting the brains of the machine down. I'm knees deep in salt of town. Just soldering, soldering up on down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo! I'm knees deep in salt of town. Just soldering, just soldering on down. So I've soldered six identical versions of that circuit and they're right here, one, two, three, four, five, six. And if I push them, you'll notice they jump. They all jump. They're all completely separate to each other. All we need to do now is wire them together. And it's rather quite simple. You notice that each of the uniselector switches has a bunch of rows and these are not connected to each other. So you can get them to do different things. So this one's counting over. This one's counting from one to 10. This wire is directly connected to the voltage input of the electromagnet down here that's making this work. If we connect this to electricity, it clicks over. And this wire right here is wired to control this one. So this counts to 10 and every time it gets to zero again, it needs to flick this one a long one. So it says one zero. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So we're gonna solder this wire that is connected to the input of this one to a couple of the connections on this uniselector right here. What this wire now does is when this gets back to nearly to zero, it actually sends a bit of electricity through here and turns this on. So let's, uh, let's watch them both. Hey. So the only uniselector we're actually using is this one. This one is controlling that one, that one's controlling that one, and so on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So what I need to do now is wire this one into this one, into this one, into this one, into this one, into this one. Right, I've currently got it set up to 999,990. Let's get to a million. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here we go. I know, one more. Oh, are you ready? So not fun, but it's so exciting. So that's the brains behind the counter done. It's gonna to count to a million and it will always remember the number because it has hardware memory. You could actually rewire this setup slightly to make a clock. This one would stay exactly the same because it counts to 10. However, this one needs to only count to six because it's 60 seconds in a minute. All you need to do is do a little bit of adjustment on the wiring and this will only go up to six. This one stays exactly the same because it goes up to 10 again. This one's adjusted to six again because it's 60 minutes. And then you only need one of these because you only need to count from one to 12. So it'll be 12 numbers, six numbers for 60 seconds, zero here, six there, and a zero there. And then you've got yourself a clock. But I've got to be honest, I'd rather not actually know what the time is half the time. Anyway, let's keep on building. So now we've got the brains behind the beast done without even using a single microcontroller. Yeah, I know it's a little bit overkill, but what are you gonna do? We're gonna look at the display. How are we gonna display the number? Because nobody's gonna look and try and figure out where it is in the rotation. Well, we're gonna go all out funky and we're going to use Nixie tubes and we're going to use these really really fancy ones. These were reasonably expensive actually, they're ZM1040. They're one of the larger old Nixie tubes and I think they'll look quite nice, especially with that lovely orange coat around them. However, they require more than 100 volts to run so we need to use this which will boost the 12 volts that we're using for the power supply and send out somewhere between 120 and 170 volts, which should make these light up. Right, let's wire the 100 plus volts to this one right here. 230 volts! That's a bit high! Needs to come down a lot more than that. Right, we've got the anode plugged into 170 volts here, so in theory, if I send any of the other pins to ground, we should start seeing numbers. Oh, oh yeah, we do! We do start seeing numbers! Five, four, three, two. Yeah! <laughs> the numbers are there. So Nixie tubes can actually work at a much lower voltage once they are on, but they need to be turned on with a slightly higher voltage first. So now we know... <laughs> 
Oh no. Let's unplug that. So now we know that it's going to work, I need to put a few more of these together, those 3D printed parts, and bolt them on, and then carry on wiring, and not get electrocuted. <laughs> then how are we going to do this? Oh yeah. Oh, this is going to be so cool. So now we've wired the 120 volts over to the anodes of all of the Nixie tubes. Now we can test them one by one. Right, with the ground, let's give it a go. Let's flick it. Oh, oh, yep. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I've gone ahead and wired one in. As you can see, there are 10 green wires coming out the back. Each of those wires correspond to a separate number on here. It's that easy. These run off to a row on the uni selector. Every point that it stops at actually has a green wire wired to it that corresponds to the number. So when the uni selector counts along, it sends one of the green wires to ground. Let's go. Uh, oh my god, it actually works. <laughs> right, one set, one set. Let's start here. Yeah, let's start on this one. So now this is working, we need to think about the Routina, this thing right here. Basically what happens if you leave these on the same number for too long, uh, I've heard that they, you know, it's not good for the tube. So we need to make them run around the numbers every so often, so to make sure that they all still work and such. So this is what the routine is going to do. I think the best way to describe this is to actually solder it in because it's going to take for blooming ever. So I'm going to start now and I'll see you in a few hours. So yeah, it's been a couple of days since the last time you saw this and you may have noticed there might even be another uni selector over here for even more function, which actually makes this thing way cooler than I ever thought it was ever going to be. But we'll talk about that in a little moment. Let's talk about the solution that I came up with, with solving the cathode burn. There would be a problem if they were constantly lit on the same number. What happens is this will be wired into one of the master clocks of the museum, which talks to this relay down here. And what happens is that sends out a six second pulse every six seconds this clicks this after 10 steps of six seconds which means every single minute it gets to a point where this starts running off by itself and it disconnects the ground from all of these uni selectors and routes it all the way through here which sends this going for a quick screensaver so it flashes through every single number on every single tube let's get to that point okay so it's coming up now have a look So it's gonna do that every minute. Imagine that's wired in, ticking every six seconds thanks to the master clock, and then... I love this machine. Oh, I love this machine so much. But that isn't all. Whilst I was putting this together, I was chatting to Christian, who is working on the Eurorack versions of the Cosmo modules. He mentioned that he thought it would be a cool idea to see a musical sequencer made out of these. And it reminded me that the initial reason I actually bought one of these was to make a musical sequence out of. However, I was put off by the idea of it because it only had 30 steps. It seemed a little bit awkward to actually make a musical sequencer that was sort of usable. And that sent me on a little bit of a daydream and it made me realise that this could actually be musical musical and it could actually be really quite interesting. You see, this has the ability to store a million melodies. That's right, this actually has a million individual jingles inside of it. That means every single visitor that goes through this has their own visitor jingle. <laughs> It's wired up in a way to copy the Westminster chime, you know, the ding, 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 ding. You may notice around the top of every single uni selector, there's a bunch of resistors wired in there now. What these do is they act 
as something called a resistor ladder. A resistor ladder is a very simplified digital to analog converter. What we do is we wire electricity to one side of the resistor ladder and we wire the other side to ground. What that does is it actually splits the voltage into different chunks. It's sort of how a simplified musical keyboard works. This is a back of the box of a resistor I used to work this out. So this has got all of the notes in the scale. C, C sharp, D, D, blah, 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 blah. And you'll notice there are resistors sitting here. This is the resistor ladder I decided to use. So between every single semitone, there is a 10K of resistance. You'll notice that there is actually 20K here, but 10K there. That's because between E and F, there is no semitone. There's no sharp and flat, so there's a 10K resistor. However, between D and E, there's D sharp. So we add a 20K resistor because there's two semitones between it. So we got 20K between C because there's C sharp, 20K between D because there's D sharp. So we're actually missing out these middle ones and we're playing a major scale. If you tap off the voltages between these resistors, you will actually get these notes out that you want. That's what's happening here. We're actually using the uni selectors as little mini musical keyboards. And each uni selector, because it has 10 numbers, has 10 musical keys on the keyboard. It goes C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, and then back down to C. So we've got 10 notes for each of these. These are all wired together, so that means every single one of these goes C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. This one is currently on six. The sixth note is a B, so this goes B. This one's currently on two, so this is C, D, E. This one's currently on zero, which is C, C, E, C. This is our musical virtuoso. This is basically wired to play these different keyboards at different times to play a melody. I'm not sure what the melody is right now. Let's have a listen. <laughs> so this is playing a melody. It's currently sending voltages out into this Eurorack modular synthesizer that has got the Eurorack Cosmo modular synthesizers. Ooh. So with this in mind, there's a million combinations of this jingle, which means every single number has an individual jingle. What? So every time somebody new comes through the door, they get their very own musical jingle. How cool is that? The other funny thing is I've wired it in to go ding, 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 which means that one very lucky person is actually going to get the Westminster jingle as their jingle, but I still can't figure out which number that is in the million. I'm pretty sure it's within the first 10,000, but I'm not going to be sitting here whacking to find 10,000. So without further ado, let's have a listen to some of the jingles. Obviously, pretty much all of them are gonna be under the 100,000 number. So let's give it a go.
I've got to be honest, I'm really, really, really quite pleased with how this has turned out. The musical aspect has really topped it off, and the routine, Tina, Tina, eh, eh, eh. Check out my Nixie routine, Tina, Tina, eh, 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 eh. In a couple of weeks, I'll be doing a part two of this where I'll be making a case for it, wiring it up to the master clock, and connecting it up to everything in the museum. That will likely be on this museum's not obsolete YouTube channel. I built this over the span of a week and I've done detailed vlogs on the process of it pretty much every day apart from a couple over on Patreon. So if you want to watch it from the start up to this point and how the thought process has gone on and stuff like that and you also want to support the museum and stuff like that then go and check it out over there because the support really helps and you get to see funny videos and download music and this and that. And yeah, anyway, I'm Look Mum No Computer. This is the Nixie Tube. Every unit selected counter finger. Have a lovely day.